Hello and welcome everyone. It's Karen. Thank you for joining me today. I've got a slimline card to share that is three and a half inches by eight and a half inches and it's part of a blog hop with uh, Gerda Steiner Designs and Heffy Doodle. So I'm using the Deeply Stamp set from Gerda Steiner Designs here and uh, the You Go Gull stamp set from Heffy Doodle which I think is adorable also. So I decided I wanted that little seagull to be in the submarine this time. And so there is an extra porthole in that stamp set that is empty and the seagull fit in there perfectly. So I'm just positioning him here where I wanted him to go. And I've already uh, stamped and cut out a mask for this uh, submarine. And I'm just inking up with a Copic Friendly ink the top part of the seagull, just the head. So that's all that's going to show through the hole, the porthole. And you'll see here he fits perfectly. He's so cute. So I've colored everything and the this is my seaweed. It's actually a fern dye from Spellbinders but I thought it looked like seaweed. So I've got my card front here and I'm using this contact paper. I love this paper for ink blending and masking. It just works so well and you can reuse it. So this was a piece I'd had from another project but I thought it looked like waves. So I'm just putting it on my card front there in ink blending pretty sloppily, some salty ocean and peacock feathers. And this was the other half of the mask that I've uh, just turned around now to mask off the ocean. And I'm going to, to do the sky with this. It's a cloud edger stencil from a Colorful Life Designs, which is a small US company. And I'm using this Cosmic Shimmer Color, color cloud blending ink in clear day I believe it's called and it's just the perfect blue color for a sky I just love it I've struggled finding a blue sky color but this one I really enjoy so I'm going to put all my little images where I want them to be on the card and I just want to figure out how big a track and where to put the track for the submarine to, to slide along this is what I'm using. Instead of a die, it is a bendable uh, ruler, which you can get at any office supply store, pretty sure. Or if you have a nice sister-in-law like mine, you might get it for your birthday. So thank you, Jan, if you're listening. Um, but I'm just bending it to make a fairly uh, gentle slope. You don't want it to be too steep, you know, for it to have to come back up. So just a fairly easy slope for it to slide along and I just bent it I had it masked marked with masking tape at the ends where you know was how long I wanted it to go and I just was making sure the center of the submarine would go along it and it's the perfect width I just drew a pencil line on the top of it and one underneath and that was the exact right <laughs> width for a for a track. So then I just use my craft knife. I know you can't see that pencil mark, but it's there in real life. And I just cut along that. I used my scissors to cut off the end, but you won't want to leave that as square because the submarine will catch. So I just took my little paper punch and worked it in there and just punched out the ends. Now you do want to make sure this track is smooth and you can see that's pretty rough there. So I just went over that with my uh, craft knife just to trim out those extra little bits. Just take a bit of time to make sure the track is as smooth as you can get it. Because it will matter in the end. And then this is my craft room secret weapon. It's a nail file. But I use this all the time to smooth out uh, rough edges like this or from my paper trimmer if I have a dull blade. It works so well so I just keep it in my drawer there. Now you can see there that white track stands out pretty badly. So on the card base, I am just taking some peacock feathers ink and I'm just doing some, again, pretty poor ink blending, um, but it won't show, it really doesn't matter. You just wanna cover the white. And there you can see it already, it makes a better, it has a better look to it. So you're going to need two coins that are the same size. Now I use pennies. Um, they're perfect for me. They fit in, you want it to go right in the middle of the submarine and I've put uh, a couple of pieces of double-sided uh, tape on the on the one side of the coin and then stuck that down to the back of the submarine. 
I always use two layers of foam tape. I know some people use one, but I much prefer using two pieces because I feel like it just helps that um, submarine, in this case, move more easily. And I'm just showing you here what happens if you cut that tape as a circle. So if I put that in the track here, you're, it's quite a different effect if it's a circle piece of tape. Once I remove the backing paper, you want to put the coin on top as, as centered over the other coin as you can get it. It is a little tricky because the other one's hidden half or half hidden. And I always use some anti-static powder on the track. Now you can see with the circle, this submarine will just completely spin around when it goes along that track, which I didn't really want. I wanted it to go left to right. So instead of doing a circle piece of tape, because there are times when you, you would want that. There's lots of things where it's way more fun to have your, your objects spin around. But just in this case, I didn't want that. So I'm putting in a rectangular piece of double-sided foam tape. And I was just checking here to make sure I was going horizontally with the, the submarine. And you'll see that uh, it's very different in the track. So again, uh, just centering that penny over it, pressing down, and now you can see the submarine just goes left to right. It doesn't spin around at all like the other one, so I just thought I'd put that in for you in case. So here I've got the octopus stamped in and a few fish. Those are also from the, the Deeply stamp set from Gerda Steiner Designs. Now, this is my laminating pouch, which you can see I've cut in half lengthwise. If you've seen any of my other videos, you'll be sick of this. <laughs> But I put it in just in case. Um, I'm using Tranquil uh, Alcohol Pearl and Mermaid in just the regular alcohol ink. And I'm just putting down some isopropyl alcohol and then started at the bottom with the Mermaid because it was a little darker. And I'm not a very good alcohol ink painter, user, whatever. I'm not very good with alcohol inks. <laughs> but here I've done it and I've just let it dry. It is very important that you let it dry because otherwise you may ruin your laminating machine. So it did dry for a little bit of time. And I'm now centering it where I want it to go uh, on my card front. And I'm going to put my fish where I want them to go because I had decided to put them inside the laminating pouch. So I'm just making sure that everything will fit, that I've got enough room for everything here. And then I'm going to close up the laminating folder and run it through my laminator. And when it comes out, it's uh, all the, the fish are inside, they're not gonna move. It's much clearer and it's just, it's just a really fun effect, I think, for an ocean. So I've got these Sunny Studios wave dies and I just chose one of those to use. And I just did a bit of extended die cutting to make that go right across. Um, and it it cuts quite easily this in the in the die cutting machine um, but once I got this cut out I realized I could use that second piece the other half of it and just flip it over so the waves went the same way and then I would have two rows of waves so that's what I ended up doing and I'm just taping this down here so I can cut the edges now I didn't show this very well here but I have bunched up the middle part a little bit and you will see later why that's important. So just when you do cut your edges, just remember to leave a little bit of extra space there. So you're not making it really tight across the front and you'll see why that's important a bit later. And I'm just doing the same with this one here, just taping it down and just cutting off the excess. So here I'm showing you, I did this a couple of days before I filmed the video. I tried to glue two pieces of scrap alcohol uh, acetate together and you can see that that glue, none of them really set up. They were all transparent glues when they dried, but inside the, the plastic they didn't dry. So I went to tape and you can see on the top that's an ATG tape and the bottom one is a Sook Wang or like a Be Creative kind of tape. And I have a feeling that that uh, Sook Wang tape is a little bit thicker, perhaps, than the ATG tape, because you can definitely see the shape of the tape here. 
you can see that rectangular piece, but you don't really notice the ATG tape. So I ended up using the ATG tape to tape my laminated pieces together. So you didn't really see that too much from the front. So I'm just putting some ATG tape down now on the sides. Um, I have to say I don't notice this tape in real life. I, I think it works pretty well. You might have other tapes that do work. I just That's the one that I have. But I'm just uh, adhering these two uh, ocean rows together. And then I'm just getting the little seagull ready. I'm putting some more tape on the bottom of him and foam tape behind his head just to help him stand up a little bit. And I decided to put him in between the layers. And it's so cool how you can see through that. It's, it's kind of like a wave. Now on the back, I've put two layers of foam tape. And you have to be very careful that you're not putting it anywhere near where the penny has to go. So you don't want the foam tape touching that, that penny at all anywhere. Now here I've taken off the backing paper and I'm putting some glue down because I dread putting foam tape down on a card. I always go wrong and that's you know, all that hard work done and then you mess it up. So the glue just gives you a little bit more wiggle room. And this went down fairly well this time so that was kind of nice. And once it's down I usually just make sure that that uh, submarine can still move and it does. Now I've stamped the sentiment here. It's from the uh, You Go Gull stamp set from Heffy Doodle. And I've added in the bottle, the message in a bottle, which I loved. But it was one more place to add a bit of foam tape. And you can see I've only put foam tape on the sides. Nothing in the middle because that will stop the submarine from moving. Now here, if I pull that acetate tight, you, you see that submarine can't move. So when you go to adhere this, sort of bunch it up in the middle there so there's a bit of a, a looser gap for the submarine to move. So I just take the backing paper off and then what I did is I started on the left side and just lined that up with the edge and gently put it down and then I sort of uh, put my hand under in the middle and pulled it up a little while I was getting the right side to go down where it needed to go. And that just gave, you can see the gap there, so that allowed that, that submarine to move. And then I decided it needed more anti-static powder, so <laughs> I added some more. But that definitely does help it move in the track. So there it goes, you can see it going. So lots of fun, kind of a, you know, a nice oceany thing. It's sort of summer-like, I can't wait for summer to really come here. So I hope that gives you guys a little bit in, of inspiration and maybe some ideas. Let me know if, if you get more ideas on how to use that, those laminating folders. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you guys have a great day. Thanks.